I'm convinced that the one true set of holy texts comes not from the Gospels of Jesus or the draftings of Muhammad. It comes from the works of Shakespeare. That's right. Though I'll admit I'm not a huge fan of most of his works, I'm convinced that William Shakespeare was the one true prophet of the one true God. Why? Because his works are riddled with gems of objectively, historically, and scientifically accurate predictions that would have been impossible for any mortal to know without divine inspiration. I know a lot of skeptics watch my channel, and they're going to want to see some evidence. It's fine. Well, don't take my word for it. Let's look at the evidence. Macbeth, Act 1, Scene 3. The third witch says, All hail, Macbeth, thou shall be king hereafter. Let's view this from the interpretation that it's speaking to us in modern-day America, because, of course, we're the important ones. So, how does the claim that Macbeth shall become king bear any meaning to the United States, a country that didn't even exist for a couple centuries after Shakespeare's time? Well, in Scottish, the meaning of the name Macbeth is son of Beth. In the U.S., we don't have kings. We have presidents. So ask yourself, did any of our presidents come from Scottish lineage? Why, the answer is yes the first of which was Andrew Jackson. And what was Andrew Jackson's mother's name? That's right, Elizabeth. Are you going to sit there and tell me that it just happens to be a coincidence that a couple hundred years before our country was even founded, Shakespeare knew that a man of Scottish descent with a mother named Beth would take political power? I mean... At that point, it takes more faith to believe Shakespeare wasn't divinely inspired by the one true God, and therefore that God must exist and everything else he wrote must be true, if interpreted correctly, of course. Speaking of which, I know some of you heathens out there want even more evidence, don't you? Fine, fine, let's proceed. A Midsummer Night's Dream, Act 1, Scene 2. Bottom says, The raging rocks and shivering shocks shall break the locks of prison gates. Well, let's ask ourselves about the calendar just last year. Try to keep up. Last year, the first day of summer was June 21st. Summer ended on September 22nd. So if we focus on just the summer and we take away the first few weeks and the last few weeks, we're left with a couple of weeks at the end of July and a few at the start of August. This would be, if you will, the mid-summer time. Now, what does that have to do with shocks breaking locks of prisons? Well, a story broke around that time, on August 13th of 2013, that Christian County Jail in Kentucky was struck by lightning on August 12th. Let's have a listen, courtesy of the local news station's interview with its jailer, Brad Boyd. Early yesterday morning, thunderstorms were moving through the area, and the jail took a pretty good hit with lightning strike, even though it was on a battery backup and surge protection, the lightning somehow got into the system. And the control room, the main board that controls the jail cameras, the door locks, and the intercom system throughout the jail for the sales, the way we communicate with the inmates, at this point it looks like it fried the majority of that system. The link for the story, including the date it was posted, can be found in the description box, people. You don't need to believe me. Look at the evidence for yourself. There's no way that Shakespeare could have predicted that midsummer a storm would have damaged the locks of a jail hundreds of years after he wrote those lines. Well, he wrote prison, but we know what he meant. It's also worth noting this event occurred in Kentucky, which is a southern state, or a state in the bottom half of the country. Now, who was the character who said that line again? Bum, bum, bum. That's right, atheists. Suck on that. If you still think it's just a coincidence, you probably think a tornado could just swoop through a junkyard and coincidentally assemble an airplane. Well, those two historically verifiable Shakespearean predictions alone should have blown your mind and caused you to confess to and, and repent to the God that I believe in. I understand that some of you probably are still overly skeptical. Well, what about some scientifically verifiable prediction that Shakespeare has made well ahead of his time? Well, we looked at a tragedy. We looked at a comedy. Let's look at a romantic tragedy. Romeo and Juliet, Act 1, Scene 2. Benvolio states, One desperate grief cures another's languish. Take thou some new infection to thy eye and the rank poison of the old will die. 
Now, most of you Shakespearean experts out there will read that line all wrong. You'll say that line is claiming that, uh, well, when Romeo finds another girl to dolt over, he'll forget about the one he'd been obsessed with before. But such experts who aren't reading this from a spiritual perspective don't understand that Billy Shakes not only didn't mean literal poison here, he wasn't using poison or infection to talk about a crush on a girl either. He brought up infection and poison to speak figuratively in reference to bacteria or germs. Now, he couldn't refer to them as germs because uh, he wrote the play before 1600, and germs weren't formally recognized in science until over a century and a half later. And what the passage was saying is that one form of bacteria or germ can actually fight off diseases of others. I mean, Take thou some new infection to thy eye, and the rank poison of the old will die. Doesn't that make perfect scientific sense now that I've provided you with the proper context to read it with, and we have modern science to confirm its truth? Those of you with any common sense will recognize that my observation from the Shakespeare book that I read, which indisputably match 100% with historical and scientific confirmation, means only one thing. It means that the God I believe in must have created the universe and everything in it and divinely inspired William Shakespeare. I mean, there's no possible way that Shakespeare could have been inspired by some other God or some other force that's not God or that any of the things he wrote in those books could have been coincidentally matched with observations from modern times. That's just not possible. Is it? 